Starting out, getting some pieces rough cut to size. This massive stack. That's not even all of it yet. I don't know, man. <laughs> this thing's gonna be really heavy. Three of the sides are doubled up and screwed together. As well as the bottom. Yes, the box is actually going to be this big. <laughs> Two tens or one twelve? What do you think? I don't think that that's a half bad stopping point for the day. Three sides and the bottom all put together. Like I said, everything's two layers. Already sounds pretty good. This isn't drawn to scale, but this is what I will be attempting to make. It is the dumbest box ever made for a single 12. I've never seen one before, and probably for good reason, but I want to give it a shot anyways. Getting the pieces dry fit for now. This is kind of the idea that I had. It'll have a little bit more coming out here once I figure out what the remaining length needs to be. And obviously a piece coming to about here, which is this one here. I'm just adding the round over to it. Arrow port on this side. And the baffle will be here. So the sub will mount where about that square is. The rear wave will go into this chamber. The front wave will go into the T-line. And then I still have to cut the port out in the front. And that'll go into the actual vehicle. Making some good progress. I still have to do all the 45s within the T-line and fill this space. I'm thinking foam. Still have the baffle. Securing the port and cutting the front port and doing something in the front here to mitigate standing waves. Reuse the spacers to gauge how big to make the 45s. Got them spaced the same distance apart. I'll have one more in that corner once I get the back on the box. Also thinking of running my wire underneath this port before I fill in the gap. Which will come all the way around and exit either through a terminal cup or just a hole in the box through the front port. So this just arrived in the mail. I haven't looked at it yet, but I have cut the tape, so I'm not fumbling with it on camera. This will be the sub going into this strange enclosure. How many layers of cardboard? <laughs> Never heard of these guys before, but why not? Might as well give a new company a chance to shine. Yeah, I do have to put the camera down to get this out. One second. This is the tester sub before I put in the uh, BTL Neo 12 that I've had lying around for a while. On more power, obviously, if it works on a thousand watts. But here it is. It's actually a really nice looking sub. It's a shame you won't get to see it. It's a shame it'll be hidden way back here. And the reason I went with a single driver, single 12 anyways, instead of two 10s, was because if one driver blows, the other one will probably follow. And if one speaker has issues, I'll be able to tell, hey, look, it's uh, the box is bad. We'll find out together, won't we? So sorry, little guy. Hopefully you don't die. Triple baffle is in. One side is flush mount. The other two are just normal cutout. Space the same, of course. Front port has been laid out and is ready to cut. Got this little cover over top of the arrow port drying in place right now. And I made a mistake. I have to cut it down to here and actually cut the bottom out. 
to extend it to there or there, I'm not sure yet, for the uh, curved port, similar to the curved piece over the arrow port. Um, it's easier just to show you than explain it, so. You know, sometimes I don't even know myself, but no turning back now, I gotta make it work. That's a bit better. Still have to do a little bit more trimming to get it to fit properly. But that's the idea. Figured I would go ahead and actually try to assemble this thing outside of the box before trimming any more of the front away. And by front, I mean front, this part. I built it in halves. This was the first half, and I had a whole bunch of clamps on it trying to hold somewhat of a shape. It's not the best, but I guess it'll have to do. So I really couldn't reach in there to get the adhesive out. I just finished this side, and obviously I could get a get my hand in there to get a rag and get more adhesive out than the other side. And this looks a lot better. Still made them too short, so I have to put a piece on the bottom as well. Has a little sliver on top, but that's what we're working with. While the port dries with wood filler and all that, I made up part of the back piece and got that screwed in place. Still have to add the 45 in that corner, but I've got one here. Kind of the idea for the wires. Comes around. Yeah, something like that. Started adding some foam to fill in the empty spaces and voids. And here's the port. Doesn't look too bad. It looks a little lopsided from this side, but when you look into it, you can really see how far off that is. Hopefully the air won't mind. But I mean, it kind of bothers me. Sanded it down, did some more trimming. That's how it's fitting. I decided to slide it as far as I could to this side and leave the gap to fill on the other side. And you ask, well, why not just center the two like intended? Because this overlap, I want to give this space as much as possible because they're really close together. And I'm not sure what to do about this. Do I just leave it or? What? Before securing the main port, I had to take care of a few things. I started caulking over the wires and also added a bunch around the port to kind of act like a ramp for a smooth transition. Added a few more things as you can see. Strange, but we'll see how it works. If it works at all. Coming around to the front. See the same thing, and you may notice that the finish ply is gone. I had put this angle all the way flush with the top, and I had to take it down because, well, you know, the top wouldn't fit on it if I uh, left it that way. And of course it had already dried by the time I realized, or thereabouts. Same thing with this one. A few things have changed. Covered the port. Same kind of transition, cocked over the wires. Not too shabby. On the back of the T-line, two more little dowel rods. And then this one over here, I don't know what that is. I just had this idea and then I <laughs> hit it with the nail gun and that's all there is to it. For you, it was a cut to the next scene. For me, it was a year and a half, but the top is on now. The truck this was originally supposed to go into is gone, and I now have an SUV instead, but this box will fit, and we will still proceed with the project. This thing barely fits in this car. It had plenty of room in the truck, 
which is what it was supposed to go into. So I removed this back piece to give it more air space to breathe. I'll probably end up having to cut this down and maybe work around my wires or I'll have to cut them too. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that part yet. But the sub is in, wired up, ready to go. I'm gonna test it first with this chamber open just to hear how the T-line sounds on its own. If that goes well, I'll seal this chamber off. And finally, if those two go well, seal this one off and get to hear it for real. Quickly sealed off each panel. Didn't put any weather stripping, so if it leaks a bit, it's understandable. Quickly fabbed up this piece, just to keep the box from sagging down. The first test was actually better than the second one, so I'm a little bit uh, nervous to try this, but I'm going to drive down to my spot. We're going to turn it up all the way. Alright, to avoid a copyright strike, I'm just going to be playing a sine wave so you can hear it. I guess we're going to start at 40 hertz. Turn that up all the way. That's extremely underwhelming. Very underwhelming. Pretty big roll off. Yeah, even more of a roll off. Feels like 25 hertz is actually about the loudest. Rattle can. I mean, that's actually considerable now. That's not bad. Turn that back down. All right, remove this panel. So basically, we're just dealing with the T line and the arrow port. Close that back up. Do another sine wave test. Well that's that's actually a noticeable difference opening that up. It's like maybe less flex. I doubt the camera's picking up anything because I can barely see it with my eyes. I mean, it's blowing my shirt, actually. Probably can't see that. Oh yeah, I'm afraid to go lower than that. It's unloading a bit. 19, though. Still pretty strong. I'm probably gonna modify the box by chopping off the main chamber and just running the T-line and the arrow port. If I cut everything correctly, this should just slide off now. Kinda, sorta. Yeah. Cleaned her up a bit. And since I chopped off my wires, just drilled a hole through the top just so I could test it again. 
Got those cut, got it rewired, ready to go. Back in the car, ready for testing. Mind you, this is only on like 900 to 1000 RMS at proper voltage. It's a five channel amp, so can't be asking too much of it. We got a whole lot more room in here. I'm gonna run two tests. I'm gonna try it as the sixth, and then I'm gonna open this up and just do the T-line, and whichever way is the loudest is how I'm gonna end up keeping this box. I'd say that about concludes it. I'm probably gonna end up cutting the box down again. There's really not a whole lot of airflow going through that aeroport as opposed to the T-line side. Yeah, even after all the work cutting this thing out, it still doesn't fit in the car very well, especially because I put my seats back in, have my mids on top. It doesn't look the best. Really a bunch of wasted space. So I'll probably end up taking this box out anyways, but just for the sake of it, I'm gonna turn it up one more time.